Hey, so welcome to a crime pay show. We're up here on some half abandoned railroad tracks just walking around. These ones aren't used, as you can tell, because there's no glimmer on the track, and you got fucking trees growing up through them. And this one is. We just seen a local job come by, and maybe five cars on it. You can see they're down there. Okay, or they were. I just saw the headlight. Oh, the headlight's still down there. They're probably, you know, stopped to get tacos or something, and they're gonna put the engine on, you know, on the other side of their train. They're gonna run around their train, and then they're gonna spot a couple industries. But I want to take your attention over to this plant right here. You can see it's just blooming in mass. This this white flower bastard down here. All right, really important native plant here, and it can thrive amongst the shit. Okay, it can grow in these highly disturbed urban areas. You see it popping up all over the place in alleys growing on a freeway, uh, overpass, whatever. Let's take a look, see what it is. So this is Eupatorium serotinum. You also get Eupatorium altissimum. The way to tell them apart is how long that petiole is. Okay, see that? It's almost about an inch long. Altissimum doesn't have much of a petiole. It's just this you know, straight leaf coming off the uh, stem right there with no, uh, no petiole on it. And uh, Altissimum doesn't have this serrate margin that you see down here. But of course, not all the leaves on this individual plant have that serrate margin. But you get that tooth margin and that long petiole, it's serotinum. If you don't have that, it's Altissimum. Either way, they're both important species. They produce a shit ton of seeds. Uh, the birds will eat the seeds. The seeds will also blow. You know, they're wind blowing. They got a little dandelion. Here's that pappus on them. They blow down, end up somewhere. And you can see it's just forming almost this carpet along with the solidago. It's, it's a native plant that's able to hold its own in this uh, shitty toxic railroad ballast that no doubt gets sprayed with glyphosate and all other kinds of herbicides. And you know, just such an important plant. This Eupatorium, it's a late fall bloomer. It can hold its own. It's a late fall bloomer in the same family as Goldenrod and Asteraceae. And it's just, oh, I love chef's kiss. I love seeing this fucking thing. And you can see those little white, what look like little white hairs poking out there are actually the styles what looks like a flower is actually composed of, you can see those little red anther tubes and they're composed of about seven or eight uh, individual flowers. And this is in the uh, sunflower family Asteraceae. Look at those phyleries, they're just those roofing shingle-like bracts that point up on the sides of what's called an involucre. This thing, this is such an important, I see this popping up everywhere. You know, amongst people's landscaping beds with the shitty daylilies and the fucking hostas. They love being in death with hostas here. Terrible plant for the Midwest, hostas. Or maybe it was too good. Either way, it's not native here. It's native to 9,000 miles away. No context for the ecology, no context for the pollinators. But this thing does, and this pops up everywhere, okay? It's such an amazing plant. You see this thing just covered in pollinators. You know, you get a big one of these, like look at that clump down there, all right? You'll see this thing just covered, you know, in, in 50 different pollinators, you know? 10 different species, 50 different pollinators it's just oh you could smell it too you know this thing you get a big clump of them you could smell it from 10 feet away it's such an underappreciated native plant more people really need to know what this thing is because you got this onothera too this this native evening remember the evening primrose family but of course these are diurnal flowers all right if they're white and they're in this family they tend to be pollinated by moths if they're yellow and they're open during the day they're uh, just pollinated by bees and uh, probably lepidopterans too, you know, butterflies and stuff. There's those seed capsules. So you want to get some of these, take that seed capsule when it turns brown, it'll split open along four seams and uh, you just got the, you got a shit ton of seeds in there, sprinkle them around and, uh, and you'll get nice plants coming up. Okay, sorry, this is, this is, this is actually kind of, I didn't expect to see this here. This is Tradescantia of the Comelinaceae, the family Comelinaceae. This is Tradescantia ohiensis. This is actually another cool native. Just looks like a grass, but then it gets these big purple flowers that pop up. You can't miss them, all right? Related to the plant colloquially known as Wandering Jew. Can you still, can you still say that? Is that PC? I don't know. It's kind of a weird name anyway. But uh, Tradescanthia is easier. Still named there, just some dead European white guy, but, but uh, easier name to pronounce. Anyway, really cool plant right here. You see it on the prairies. See, it's got the glaucous waxy stems. And then again, if you could find one going off, these are mostly done. Big purple showy flowers. It'd be a nice one to have in a yard. And it's evidently taken the glyphosate or triclopyr or whatever herbicide the railroad's spraying. You can see they get knocked back a little bit, but they do have obviously a very strong root system. So they're able to endure. Anyway, I'm going to go walk these tracks, drink about three non-alcoholic beers, and then polish it off with a 40 ounce of green tea. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. What are they doing down there? Well, I'll you know, tell you what. I'll you tell you what. Insight. Yeah, I'll tell you what they're probably doing on her because that's what we used to do. Oh, they're coming back now. But, you know, you got to go kill some time because if you come back too early, you know, the dispatcher's going to let you out. Yardmaster, the manager's going to find out about it and they're going to give you more work to do, you know. And if you go back early, they're going to give you a job and you're trying to do one job. How right, many jobs right, are you trying to do right. a day? And you, they're, they'll get, uh, give you more work because they just cut six jobs in the yard. So they're going to pile that existing work onto you. They're trying you're to make helping it more efficient. Right, right. Involved, you're, you're, so you're helping the company 
fuck other employees Give and and possible. fuck their customers as too. As Part of that precision scheduled precision railroading schedule shit. Precision scheduled railroading. Right, and you don't want precision don't scheduled want railroading to work because it's a bull. It's a bullshit. It's and a it, scam. That's why. That's why Palestine, Ohio, East Palestine. That's happened. why that happened. Because no of was precision a track. Because of precision. Because they, they, they cut all the jobs. They They're making the a longer, they longer trains. Not they, as many no people. Out there. They don't got nobody watching the defect detectors and stuff because the they cut the so front. many jobs. So that's Stuck why. So you got to you you know you got to slow things down. You're doing you're doing everyone a favor by taking your time, taking a longer beans. That's lunch, and and basically that's safety. Fucking that's the company. The safety looks you got to like fuck the company. There. Right fuck there you the go. Company. Right. Look at that old oh, they got a caboose. Boom. They got a shoving platform. Look at that. And a little little look. They got a fret on back. That's like the spiritual center of that train, man. See, that's probably a high seniority job. Daylight hours, pretty relaxed to get to stop and get tacos, or you know, or get a burrito or something somewhere. It's nice.